Hey guys, my name is Shai. This pick a card reading is going to be about what you need to do next. I have just been feeling voices coming at me of people just going, what the hell do I do now? What now? What's my next step? What paradigm should I go into next? What is the next challenge? What is the next project? What is the next phase? I feel like this is, and this is me too. I've been sitting around wondering what's next. I feel that most of us have either just completed a major, major cycle or summited some kind of challenge. And, you know, for a moment we basked in that and it was awesome. But now we're wondering what now, what next? And I know that some of us are really feeling pretty beat up about this. So uh, not everybody, of course, some of us are just looking for the next exciting thing. But a lot of us are trying to figure out, like, where do they even put their next foot forward? What direction do they go in to even, you know, get their next meal, that kind of thing. So this reading is going to be a little bit different than my other ones. As you can see, I got six cards, which I usually don't do. There's actually only four cards in here, and they're all Oracle cards. So this is actually intended to be a little bit shorter, maybe only like five minutes, although I'm pretty talkative, so I guess we'll see how I do. But go ahead and pick your card. It's one to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll see you in your reading. Hey, Pile One, welcome to your reading. So what we got here is this Oracle card over here. This is where you're at right now. This is your starting point. And it is Libra, I balance. The two cards in the middle, this is your next steps or the bit of advice from the universe about what you might want to consider doing next. And it says, your commitment is being tested and new moon, a new start is coming. Finally, where you're going is meditation. Meditation. Very interesting when we're looking at the trajectory from starting at Libra. So... Let's get into this a little bit here. This Libra card, Libra obviously be, being about justice and the scales coming into balance. I don't know if you guys have been balancing your internal energies or something in your external environment. Of course, it is probably a little bit of both, but if you have been focusing or fixating even on your external environment going, why is that out of balance? Why is that per person bothering me? Why is this situation so frustrating? The invitation here is to look within because as soon as you get yourself into balance, all of your inner energies into balance, then it starts to reflect externally. Um, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't keep working on your external environment, but it's just remember to be focusing on both the inner and the outer. In fact, that is part of being in balance, right? Not focusing too much on your inner world and also not focusing too much on your external world. And I feel like you guys might have felt like for a moment that the scales had balanced and that everything had just clicked into place and you're like, yes, this is it, this is over. Um, and then you felt the wobble again. It's because <laughs> your commitment is being tested. So <laughs> uh, first quarter moon, meaning if you thought the, the game was over or you had reached your destination, you were just a little bit premature on that. It's that this isn't quite over yet. You know, there's a an epilogue, a postscript, one more uh, phase for you to go through before this particular energy of yours is completed, before this cycle is completed. So, you know, I don't think you need to take this too seriously as in, you know, the universe is testing you and you need to pass this test. Otherwise, you won't be worthy. It's not proving your worth. It's not anything like that. It's just there is more you need to learn from this situation. There is still one thing that you're overlooking or one lesson you haven't learned or one experience you haven't had. It doesn't need to be a big deal about learning your lessons and being a good little student, right? It, it's just something is still incomplete about this energy. So if you were feeling like it was time to move on um, and you're wondering what is your next steps or what is next for you, um, it's just not not quite, not quite yet. There's one thing left. And if something's coming up in your mind while I'm talking about this, it's that. 
you know, it, that one thing needs to be addressed or experienced or completed or finished or get closure on it. Whatever that is, you need to, <laughs> you need to do that. And, you know, take heart because your new start is coming. New moon. Um, from the time you're watching this, this could be the next new moon. Literally, you know, things have a tendency to start fresh on new moons. But um, with this being paired with this meditation card, uh, I mean, if you're interested in meditation, you know, this is a big red flag from the universe telling you to, you know, deepen your meditation practice or pick up a meditation practice if you don't meditate already. Um, just because it's interesting, you know, like I said earlier, seeing the meditation card come up with the Libra card, because if you want to come into balance, if you want to find that center point, then the best way that I know of anyway is to meditate. That is how I got myself into balance. And the cool thing about meditating is that it's not just a two-way balance. It's not just the justice scales where you're balancing two things. It's finding your center point out of all of the myriad aspects of your consciousness. If you think of your consciousness as a sphere, <laughs> you know, and not a, not a pair of scales, as a sphere, um, and think about if you could draw dots all over the outside of the sphere, you know, just d d d d d all over the place and cover the sphere, each one of those dots would be an aspect of your consciousness. And how do you balance that many things? It could be millions of dots on that sphere, right? Millions of aspects to your consciousness. Well, you, you balance all of those millions of things by finding the center point of the sphere, kind of like the center of this black hole, this moon, this dark moon, this new moon, right? So yeah, if you're trying to figure out how to get into balance, and you feel like you're just not quite balancing, <laughs> um, think of think of it from a more multi-dimensional perspective. And in fact, even thinking about your consciousness as a sphere with millions of aspects is, you know, somewhat simplified because, you know, I don't know how many dimensions there actually are. People used to talk about 10 dimensions and now they talk about 12 dimensions, then they added the 13th dimension. And now some people in, you know, new age circles talk about 144,000 dimensions. So. I don't know. I don't have a specific number that I'm attached to about how many dimensions there are, but however many dimensions there are, your consciousness encompasses all of them. So if you can think of a sphere encompassing all possible conceivable dimensions and densities and vibrations, that is what you're trying to balance. And so you do that by finding the center, the heart of everything. And yeah, the heart, <laughs> the heart. And the best way um, that most people know of typically I would say is, is meditation. But if you're just really not into meditating, um, you know, it doesn't need to be meditation. It can be whatever analog is for you, you know, whether that's horseback riding, riding a motorcycle, just really uh, running and, you know, going to that runner's high or doing something that gets you into the flow state. Um, yeah, something, something active that helps you get into that state of centeredness. So whatever that is for you. Um, I don't want to be preaching meditation here because you know, you don't need to meditate in order to evolve your consciousness. That just happens to be one good tool. But if it's something else for you, go for that. So for you, I think the <laughs> you guys, the main message here is to find the center of your heart space that balances all the conceivable aspects of your consciousness. Don't just look at yourself as a or your problem. If this is more of your problem rather than an internal thing, don't just think of this energy as a two two way thing. It is incredibly multifaceted. So I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Hey, Pile 2. Welcome to your reading. You guys, I feel, might be worried about your health um, or your weight or your physical security. Definitely feeling some kind of either frustration with, because we have, <laughs> you know, first house, the body, right? This is Aries energy. I shove that a little bit better there. There we go. Yeah, so feeling frustrated that you're not making any progress uh, in your health problems, whether you're trying to cure some kind of mental health issue or just physical problem with your body or uh, weight or just not being able to break through some kind of exercise plateau or something like that. Um, but for some of you, maybe worried about your actual physical security going, where am I going to sleep? Am I going to get evicted? Um, or I hope nobody is being threatened physically by something more serious than that. But 
this is where you're coming off of. And luckily, we have really good um, information about what is coming up for you <laughs> because expect powerful change, new moon eclipse. That is a solar eclipse. And I don't know if you guys have ever paid attention. I'm sure some of you have to how incredibly quickly and intensely your life can shift if you are walking your personal path and this and at the time of the solar eclipse it's like everything can just bam um, a whole new paradigm or way of being can blast into your life so this is a really 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 good sign that whatever your problem is whatever you're worried about as long as you keep putting one foot in front of the other i think in this like with a solar eclipse card coming through it doesn't even matter which direction you're going and just at this point you know just keep yourself alive just keep getting out of bed just keep doing whatever it is that you can do and you're gonna be fine because look at this new moon in taurus prosperity lies ahead beautiful <laughs> this is feeling strong strong as the bull and feeling healthy and feeling sure of yourself and feeling confident and of course it's all of that second house energy following the first house actually right so um to do with your possessions and your earn in, earned income and just your feeling of abundance and security in the world right this is the, these these energies go really beautifully hand in hand and it's you know two <laughs> two new moon cards I, I really love it so some kind of energy is going to come in and shift everything for you and um, I don't, I don't, I don't think this is going to be one of those situations where you're waiting around for somebody to come and save you. I know I just said you're going to have an energy come in, um, and shift things for you, but this isn't like a savior thing. This is you having laid the groundwork for this. And more specifically, you're going to be coming into some kind of insight. And as you can see, this card really highlights the body, the body. So look at this light coming in this information coming in you know this could be in meditation or in your dreams or just an inspired idea coming in when you're making a salad um you're gonna have an idea of what to do um of how to shift things for yourself and know that you know this is coming in like you can give yourself credit for this absolutely but it's not just you this is being co-created with your guides um you know with your angels with whatever higher power you personally believe in this is, they're going to be coming in and helping you, sending you inspiration and support and just know you're not alone through working through this. So I think the important thing for you guys is just when you feel this inspiration come in, when you feel this insight come in, um, and this is number 13, if that means anything to you guys, when you feel that, that spark, that idea, that gut instinct follow it. Don't doubt yourself. Don't doubt yourself because prosperity lies ahead and you are going to, be going to be receiving this insight. And your idea could sound completely insane to yourself. It could seem like a crazy risk. It could, you know, be getting up, moving across the planet to a country where you don't speak the language and you don't have any money, you don't have a job and you don't know what you're doing, right? It could be that level of crazy. But sometimes <laughs> that is a... If you want powerful change, if you want powerful change, sometimes you need to do something powerful, right? If you want something you never had before, you need to do something you've never done before. So really trust yourself on this one and trust your guides, like trust your, your inner guidance and trust your intuition. Trust this insight that comes in. You'll know it when you, when you feel it. Um, and don't let all the naysayers in your life tell you that you're being crazy, um, you know? I mean, you can listen to them tell you that you're being crazy, but don't let them stop you because guys, like every day that goes by, every week that goes by, every month that goes by, we're all getting more and more called to stand in our sovereignty, in our individuality and in our independence and in our authenticity and trusting our own internal guidance. We're leaving behind the paradigm of listening to others and moving into the paradigm of only ever listening to our own inner guidance. So there's something powerful coming up for you guys and... Only you know what that is and only you will be able to trust that that you know what it is. Nobody can tell you what to do on this one. So with that being said, that's, that's all I really can say on this one. But <laughs> you guys will know that piece of cosmic inspiration when it comes through for you. And all you have to do is follow it.
and trust that the universe will unfold for you. So good luck on your journey, guys. I don't know what kind of surprise is in for you, but I know it is going to unfold beautifully. So good luck and hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Hey, pile three, welcome to your reading. You guys are right now sitting in this water element, sensing. This to me, if I can show you this card a little better, is about your intuition, about your feelings, um, and really about your psychic ability. If you guys have had brand new frequencies coming in, if you've been getting insights that feel like they're coming from somewhere else, or if you've been empathically picking up on vibes of a place or other people's feelings or animals or just from places beyond your understanding you're feeling you know confused you're like well what is going on how am i am i losing my mind am i crazy am i making this all up am i just imagining things well no this is you dissolving the barriers that were holding back your intuition so you are <laughs> trying to learn to reach out with your psychic perception, with your intuition. And this, <laughs> this energy is gaining momentum, waxing moon. That's <laughs> pretty clear, right? This is a, a new thing you're going to be working on. And if you're trying to figure out, what do I do? How do I, you know, how do I build on this? How do I understand what's happening to me? How do I know if what I'm sensing is is true or correct? How do I get answers to my questions? How do I communicate with my guides? How do I activate more of my potential? How do I um, deepen my intuition? How do I become more psychic? All of those things. Um, yeah, you're in that period where you're trying to figure out um, what you need to do because this is what we, that's what everybody does, right? We always go, what do I need to do? How do I do this? But that's actually not the best way <laughs> of looking about it because that is part that that energy of going I need to do I need to work hard I need to take you know a series of 10 steps I need to take all these actions that is the past paradigm and that is not how things are going to be panning out for us as we step into our future more and more we're going to be going with the flow and understanding that we don't it's not about taking action all the time. A lot of the time it's going to be about just allowing yourself to unfold, allowing your intuition to unfold, allowing your energy centers to open up, allowing your soul gifts to come through, allowing your past life memories to come through. And it just all comes through in perfect cosmic timing. And there's nothing you need to do to make it happen other than be open to it and just go with the flow. And I know it's frustrating when you're wanting everything to happen all at once and you're wanting and you're just eager for more and you're ambitious and you're like, yes, I'm ready for this. I want this. I know how frustrating that is, but you just got to be a little bit patient because the answers you need are coming full moon in Gemini, you know, <laughs> and I used to get this card and be so frustrated because I would be like, ah, you know, they're not coming. They're not coming fast enough. I want them now, right? <laughs> like a little kid waiting for dessert, right? I wanted, I wanted everything now. And so I know exactly <laughs> how that feels, but from experience, I can tell you that this period of frustration with your lack, perceived lack of progress, it's only perceived, you're actually making huge progress, leaps and bounds, but it just feels like you're not making progress because you're just so excited and because a lot of the progress is happening beneath the surface. And the more you affirm, I am ready for this. I want this. I, I am intuitive. I am psychic. I remember my soul gifts, you know, just say whatever, <laughs> whatever feels resonant for you. Just affirm that, just say that, just open up and be ready for this. And that is how you will just kind of smooth out your unfolding. Um, and once you get a little bit further down the road, you'll start to see evidence of how rapidly you actually are progressing and you'll start to see confirmation. You'll start to go, wow, you know, I'm not crazy. Wow, this really is real. And you'll be connecting with other people who are having experiences like you. And it'll just be making so much more sense and it'll get so much easier. So just hang in there a little bit longer. I promise this phase, because it is just a phase. You're just in a phase of waiting, of growing, of it's, you're like a seed that's underneath the earth still. And, you know, it, the seed is growing and it just hasn't bust out, you know, into the sunlight yet. And you're very close. <laughs> and, you know, here's this card 
Nothing has gone wrong. Nothing has gone wrong. This card, you take this literally, like as literally as you can. Nothing, not a single thing. You're thinking of a bunch of things that have gone wrong, either in your life or in the world or in the cosmos, whatever. No, none of it has gone wrong. None of it. Everything is unfolding exactly as it is, exactly as it's supposed to, exactly as it was inevitable for it to do. You can really, really think about this and take this as far as you can, as far as you want. Also, I had some profound experiences with this card, actually, so I really invite you just to take a look at it. I mean, it's, it's you know, just a yin-yang in the middle, you know, with some art around it that may or may not mean anything to you. But after you see this card, I'm not kidding, watch for yin-yangs in weird places. Like, of course, you walk into a new age store and you expect to see yin-yangs everywhere, right? Or <laughs> but weird places, like books that have nothing to do you know, with anything to do with a yin yang or in like your grandpa's garage on the back of a toolbox, like a yin yang, something like that. It, it show up in weird places. And when you see it, that's, a, that is a major synchronicity. Pay attention to everything that is happening, everything that is happening around you, other things that you see, things that you're feeling for, see what you're feeling and what you're thinking in that situation, your thoughts and anything happening around you, that is all communication from the cosmos. So yeah, I think that's basically your guys' message. You came here asking, what do I do? What do I do next? You don't actually have to do anything because it's all happening. It's all inevitable and you're unfolding perfectly. Um, if you do feel like you need to do something just to, you know, sit still, <laughs> just focus on being open to your journey. Uh, just focus on opening your third eye on being open to communication from whoever you want to communicate with in the cosmos. Just focus on being ready and being open and affirming whatever you want to affirm about yourself. <laughs> so I think that's it. Good luck, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, Pile 4, welcome to your reading. I feel like you guys have been running on faith for a long time, even faith in yourself. I don't really mean religious faith, although maybe it's that for some of you. <laughs> Your uh, strawberry quartz just jumped off the selenite. You want to stay on there, buddy? Um, What was I saying? It's this card, this Pisces energy, I believe. There we go. This is where you're at and maybe the paradigm you've been in of not seeing any light at the end of the tunnel, not understanding the full picture, not being able to see the full picture, not knowing where you're going and just feeling like you just have to keep going. I'm just going to keep charging ahead. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. I don't know anything about this. I don't even know how this is going to work out, but just kind of taking it on faith and you're kind of getting fed up with that. <laughs> you're getting really fed up. You're going like, I want answers. I want results. I want something like you're tired of sitting in that uh, Pisces energy of everything being hidden and murky, right? I mean, Pisces is, I have a Pisces North node and it is actually what led me to be here doing tarot reading. So I really really love Pisces energy, but you know, the shadow aspect of it is just being so oppressive and so dark and so mysterious and everything is hidden and it can just be so, so, so just like a thick veil around everything, trying to operate through a thick fog. So when you sit in that for too long, you really start to want to see physical, tangible results, something that you can you don't have to believe anymore. You don't have to put on faith. You can know, you can see, you can understand. You're looking for real, real clarity on something. And luckily, I've been holding this card for a while here. <laughs> New Moon and Capricorn, your hard work is paying off. And you also have Be Bold and Make the First Move, Cardinal Moon, which is cool because New Moon and Capricorn, Capricorn is a cardinal sign. So you've got your cardinal move, your cardinal moon for you to make, <laughs> make your first move, make your move. And this is so much uh concrete energy you know capricorn capricorn is probably the best 
energy for getting shit done, for just handling something, for overcoming literally any obstacle, and for focusing on the long, long, long haul. That's what Capricorn gets done. And if you're kind of getting fed up with your Pisces energy, with everything being mysterious and just too mystifying, you are so coming in to the antidote to that. This Capricorn energy, your hard work, your hard work is paying off, guys. Your hard work is paying off. And isn't that beautiful, actually? You can see here the sea goat coming right out of the sea. You're going through that transformation where you're coming up out of the out of the water. Now you're going to be on land and you're going to have to transform a little bit because you were a water creature and you're coming up into the land. You need to grow some legs and, you know, you're going to be pretty wobbly at first because you didn't, you know, you hadn't really used your legs before. Not for walking, maybe use them for swimming, but now you got to learn to climb the mountain Capricorn style. So, and there's going to be something here where you are going to have to make the first move. I mean, if you guys were asking about romance, uh, this is definitely like go ask that person out. Um, but it just whatever it is, if you're trying to start a business, if you're trying to get in shape, if you're trying to, uh, what if you're trying to achieve for yourself, you're going to have to stick yourself out there. You know, the waiting around isn't going to pay off for you. The hard work is going to pay off. So this is a moment of really doing and taking action and zeroing in on what you want and doing whatever steps are required in order to accomplish that. You know, if you want to make $10,000, but you don't have a job, well, you got to get a job, right? Just any job, just start getting money in. <laughs> and so that's so many different things, but identify steps you can take. I uh, like very, very concrete steps. You know, if your problem is money, then you need to find to figure out right now what you can do to make money. If your problem is you are looking for a partner and you've been single for a long time, well, you need to figure out a way to start meeting people, you know, sign up for a dating app. It can be something simple um, and even something that doesn't, even if it doesn't pan out in the long run, well, that first step you took could have led to the thing that does end up working out for you. So yeah, and if you're trying to start a business, you know, well, you need to actually start the business. If you're trying to write a book, start writing 500 words a day even if it's only 500 words you know keep <laughs> keep doing it because your hard work will pay off it's just the universe here is looking for some kind of initiative and in like physical actual tangible input from you and i think as soon as you do that everything will um really what's the word snowball from there because beautiful 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 you are heading to enlightenment. <laughs> this is where everything is going. You see the flower of life back here with the earth in the middle. This is everything coming into connection. I mean, and if you were asking about if this was a spiritual question for you, you're on your spiritual journey. <laughs> yeah, you're you're going to have a massive breakthrough in the calibration of your consciousness. This is you opening up to entirely new realms of things you never even conceived of before of connecting with other aspects of yourself of other beings that you know your soul family who are out there other beings who are wanting to connect with you this card is that's that's all happening <laughs> major major breakthroughs whole new level of breakthrough and you know if this was a more concrete problem for you same thing applies just on the physical level So I think that's pretty much it. You guys just need to kind of strike a match on whatever you're doing and know that you've been working on this for a long time and you've been kind of stuck, but it's about to just, uh, like I just saw literally somebody touching a, a lighter to like a bunch of really dry kindling and everything just sparking up, you know, <laughs> enlightenment. You're about to catch on fire and it's going to be awesome. So just go do that thing you know you need to do that you're thinking about right now and that will snowball to have drastic changes so good luck with that guys uh just stick with it and i hope to see you again soon bye hey pile five welcome to your reading you guys are coming off of an 11th house energy this says 11th house friends so this card highlights the 11th house as friendship um i would think of it you know for a general reading here as really your your networks um and that can be as abstract as you want it to be that can include your networks with your cosmic consciousness and your guides and your soul family and all of that or it can just be 
your community, your, your, you know, human community and your, um, business networks, your, um, networking you do at school, you know, if you're in academia, I'm trying to advance yourself with that. It's some, there's a broader, you know, network <laughs> to repeat myself with that word, broader network of energy and it has served you to a point. Uh, it has gotten you where you are, but you're being called to individuate because at some point that net, that network just becomes a net that is closing around you and it is starting to be stale. It's starting to be stale and it's starting to hold you back. So you're <laughs> having a North Node moment here. Step out of your comfort zone, North Node. For any of you who aren't familiar with the North Node, um, I don't want to take up too much time explaining it. So in the internet is full of explanations for that. I really do encourage you if you feel called to, to Google that and to run your chart and find out what your North node is. Cause that can really, really give you a little bit of a hint about what your next move needs to be, what the direction of, you know, the next 20 years of your life is going to, going to be. I know for me, it was so, uh, enlightening to know about that. Um, but at any rate, this is, you know, <laughs> you leaving the nest, you leaving, your past paradigms behind and it's not getting rid of them entirely but it is definitely moving on and setting your sights to a broader horizon so you know this could be a job you need to leave behind because it is you know you got everything you could out of it this could be friends you have to leave behind um you know or not even it's not like you need to break up with your friends but it could just be maybe you need to be bringing in new people into your life and you need to you know not keep hanging out with the same old people from high school every weekend like you have been because maybe that's just stuck and stale and old and you just kind of feeling like you've outgrown them you still care about them and you still want them in your life just you know not in the same way not as much not all the time right maybe you want to hang out with them you know once a month instead of every weekend that kind of thing because you know there's you know there's more out there for you and yeah nothing is set in stone you know, the whatever has been your past doesn't need to be your future. Everything can still shift. If you're feeling stuck in a job, stuck in a relationship, stuck in a limiting belief system, because Aquarius, you know, 11th house energy is Aquarius. And that can that really, really governs uh, our intellectual belief systems. And so if you need to let go of a belief system, if you have thoughts and ideas that are holding you back, you need to let them go because you know, the ocean, call on the ocean, call on water energy to just wash it away. You can wash it all away and start as fresh as you want. You know, when you have a North Node, no, <laughs> a North Node moment, that doesn't need to mean leaving everything behind, but it does mean you need to be bringing in new energies and kind of be putting your past energies on the back burner. Take what is best from your past paradigm cultivate it, put it in a backpack, you know, keep it under your pillow, something like that. And just start focusing on what is new and where you're going. You know, you don't want to be looking back at this stage in your life. You want to be looking forward. And this last card here, authentic truth, authentic truth here. Let me... This card is all about being you, yourself and you, you and nobody but you, not letting your friends influence you, not even you know, your romantic partners, certainly not letting <laughs> your boss or your job or your society like define who you are. This is you tuning into the very heart of yourself, knowing who you are entirely and shining that forth. So <laughs> that is really the gist of this. And this is your kind of trajectory energy. This is where you're going. So I know you're going to get here. And in the meantime, it is just identifying the network that has become a net to you, the network that has become a cage, identifying that and freeing yourself up from it, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone and, you know, washing away whatever is no longer serving you so that you can step into your authentic truth. So I think this reading is just a little bit of a call from the universe, like a little bit of a nudge to go, hey, you know, you are you, be nobody else, be nobody else. Don't let anybody's um, ideas and beliefs and expectations and constraints um, don't let them define you. Only you define you. So I think that's what I'm seeing here for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Hey, Pile 6, welcome to your reading. I knew your guys' was going to be big because when I was dealing out the cards, 
I only wanted to use one of these Secret Language of Light cards, but I just, you know, accidentally dealt you out two, and I was like, that's because they've got something going on. <laughs> Here we are looking at your cards. Let me just read them out. Saturn Return. Bam. If those of you who are between, you know, 27 and 30, <laughs> Saturn Return. Or, I mean, shit, you guys could be having your second Saturn, Saturn Return, you know, in your 50s. So, huge, huge, oh my god. I'm so glad I'm 31 and just recently survived my Saturn return. That's going to be three of the most intense years of restriction and soul lessons that ultimately free you and send you off on just an insane journey. Of course, not all of you who are getting this are having a Saturn return, but it's that same frequency. That's why you're, you're getting this card and that's why you tuned into this reading because you are uh, learning some kind of soul lesson that is going to play out through restriction and through restraint and through responsibility and through um, shedding whatever no longer serves you. You know, the only way, you know why so many people kill themselves at 27 is because they can't evolve or they, you know, they don't let go of whatever it is they need to let go of. Because when Saturn comes back around, there is something, it's different for everybody, for, for all of us, there's something we need to let go of and something we need to step into. So this doesn't need to be your Saturn return, but you can, if you're, you know, over 30, you can think back to your Saturn return and go, what it, what helped you get through that period? Same thing's gonna help you now. And don't let the past hold you back, south node. <laughs> so that goes exactly with your Saturn return, right? Don't let your past hold you back. Don't let your previous self hold you back. I think really this is some aspect of yourself that is kind of coming up to be let go of or some kind of habit, some kind of, uh, you know, way of being, some kind of belief system, thought process, or just, you know, unprocessed anger, unprocessed guilt, unprocessed desires, fears, something you have that has been like, been a consistent problem for you for your whole life, finally, this is when the universe forces you to face it, you need to face it. And the sooner you face it, the sooner you can let it go. So, you know, you can drag this out, kicking and screaming, <laughs> and Saturn will eventually sort you out. And, uh, well, that, that's the way to make it the hard way. Um, the way to smooth this out is to just identify what the universe is trying to get you to do what the universe is trying to let you make you let go of and then what the universe is trying to get you to move into identify those things and then just handle it just zero in on it and handle it and that will make this uh quicker and smoother and easier on you but of course this is never easy because when saturn comes back around whatever you have to let go of if saturn is bringing that up and trying to get you to let go of it it's gonna suck <laughs> there's just there's no two ways about it um but that is why Saturn is, you know, he's my favorite planet. He is my favorite consciousness in our solar system that I like to tune into. Um, he's just, he's the best because he is the one who is willing to just really just handle the problem and to make us face ourselves and face our deepest, darkest problems. And, you know, it is for our highest, highest good, because once we do that, once we finally go through that difficult process, we are just so free, so free. <laughs> and that's where you guys are going, because that another reason I was so enthusiastic about your cards when I first pulled them up is because of the ones that are coming up. So, you know, this middle card here is just take time to breathe out, disseminating moon. <laughs> um... To me, that is a call to, you know, meditate, to take a hot bath, to have a glass of wine on, on your deck, you know, do whatever you need to do to just take a chill pill. Because when you're coming into a period of your life, if it's a Saturn return or just something else, and you have this Saturn energy coming up, you have been going so hard and so fast for so long. That's sort of why you're going to have to hit the brick wall because it's going to make you stop. Um... Some of you might have had something in your life that literally made you stop. You know, you got in some, you got some kind of illness, some kind of accident, um, 
something uh, drastic might have happened, you know, some kind of tower moment if we had tarot cards um, came up and stopped you in your tracks, it's because the you, you, Saturn, Saturn needs you to take a chill pill because once you sit there and stop for just a minute, you can start to, that is the space in which you can look at your fears, look at your anger, look at whatever you're repressing, and that's where you start to deal with it, right? You can't do that if you keep running around, distracting yourself with work, distracting yourself by helping others, distracting yourself by even self-improvement, <laughs> right? Just, you need to stop. You need to really just go into stillness and let things start to uncoil. You guys are coiled up like like a, like, like a coil, right? I can see a coil just so tight, so spring loaded, and it's about to snap. And you, you want to be still when that is happening because then you can process it and then you, it, the effects won't ripple out into the rest of your life so hard. So where this is all going, this is, I mean, bam, it's a major awakening. You have this awakening card. That's where it's going. A first soul tree. So this is really coming into an understanding of what your soul's purpose is, why you are here. What is the point of you being incarnate right now in this body, in this period of Earth's history? Why are you here? Why are you here? And who are you connected to? What is what is your greater um, cosmic connection? You know, this can be your ancestors. This can be your soul family. This can be connection to interdimensional beings. And um, also, you know, your soul family, including people who are alive right now and your soul family who is not in a body right now, all of them. Um, and you'll start to put yourself into perspective, knowing that, hey, okay, so, you know, my soul group kind of has this one collective mission or, you know, even just, you know, your friends or your coworkers, or whatever, have this collective mission and you go, okay, and what can I contribute to that collective mission? I have this skill set. I have this interest. I have this, these resources, whatever it is. And those are the things that are, you have those, those resources because that is what is required for you to serve out your purpose in order for you to live out your highest life. And it is you might compare yourself to others going, oh, I wish I had those gifts. I wish I had those resources. I wish I could do that. Well, I mean, that's what they're doing and they do that because that's what they need in order to do what they need to do. You have your own unique gifts and it is not to compare yourself to others because you are part of the tree. You're part of your soul tree. Every single one of us is a branch on this on the soul tree, right? If you just think of a tree, you don't judge each every different branch on the tree going, oh, that one is longer than that one. And that one has more twigs on it than that one. And that one has more leaves. No, it's like every branch is just perfect being the branch on the tree. You're just one branch on your collective's soul tree, on your soul family's soul tree. And, you know, you have perfect abilities and resources and gifts and intelligences and insights that you need in order to serve out your purpose for the collective and where this is going guys i gotta show you this awakening bam if you came to this reading with a question about spirituality there you go i mean enough said i don't even need to say anything about this this is a massive shift in your consciousness, opening up to new levels and new vistas that you had never imagined before. This is, this is the time of awakening. This is, you are waking up. And if you thought you were already woken up, if you thought you were already awake, if you thought you'd already had an awakening, this is another one. It never stops. The awakenings just keep piling on top of each other. And the more awakenings you have, the more they just speed up and become more intense. And it can just think, you can just think, just when I thought things couldn't get any more crazy, bam. Here they're 10 times more crazy than you thought. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> so it's so good to see this, guys, because we need so many people to wake up right now, to join the rest of us, right? Because the more awakened souls we have, the more we are holding awakened frequencies and the more everybody else can wake up. So if you're getting this card and you're tuning into this kind of a weird video 
in 2020 or you know if you're watching this in a future time whenever this is for you just thank you for existing thank you for doing your service thank you for being awake and being willing to walk your path and being able to pass the tests of Saturn and to learn his lessons and to step into your purpose because that is what I really think you guys are doing and it's funny because you might think oh there's so much I have to do I need to like you know do my life mission and be of service and have a purpose well once you really go through this next phase of your awakening your purpose is going to be to unfold easily and with joy and with flow it's not going to feel like a job it's not going to feel like something you're stressed out about it is just going to be a natural part of your being because we're leaving behind that paradigm of having to do a horrible job you don't like right you're just going to be able to do what you love and it is going to that is whatever you love to do is going to be how you're of service let me say that again whatever you love to do that is how you're going to be of service even if whatever you love to do doesn't seem like that could be of service that is actually your your best way of being of service because you have so much passion and love and joy all tangled up with that thing that you love to do. And that is, at the end of the day, that is what we need more of on the planet. We don't need more people, you know, working hard at a job they don't like <laughs> just because they think that's being of service. No, we need more people living out their passion and their joy and their freedom and their ecstasy. And that is where you guys are going. So thank, you can thank Saturn. <laughs> You might not want to right now, but eventually you will because he is helping you. He's assisting you in kind of unlocking this potential. So good luck, guys. Thank you for tuning in and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.